Now let's say I want to make a site where artists can upload their paintings and display them in a gallery. Now I already have part of the site built where, as you can see, I have a list of galleries here with one gallery already added here. And this gallery has a single painting in here. So we can click this and check it out. And here's the gallery and here's the one painting that currently has no image associated to it. As you can see, if we try adding a new painting, all we can do is provide a name. There's no way to upload a new image when we add a new painting. It's just blank. So how do we attach a new image to this? Now one way to handle image attachments is through Paperclip, which I covered in episode 134. But in this episode, I want to show you a new gem that's on the scenes called Carrier Wave. Now Carrier Wave is quite a bit more flexible than Paperclip. It's based on Rack, so it of course works with Rails and also Sinatra and other Rack-based Ruby apps. And it can support a variety of ORMs, including Active Record, we got Data Mapper, Mongoid, and some others as well. Another significant difference is that it keeps everything in a separate class called an uploader. So all the file attachments and processing logic goes in here. This way you're not mixing it into the class, the, uh, the actual model itself. All right, so the first step is to install Carrier Wave into our application. So we'll just go to the gem file and add the Carrier Wave gem here. And then just run the bundle command to get it installed. And now with that installed, we need to generate that uploader class. And Carrier Wave provides a generator for this called uploader. So we'll just call Rails G uploader and then the name of our uploader. So I'm just going to call this image uploader. And you can see that created a new file called image uploader. So let's check it out. Now notice inside of here, there's a lot of comments explaining how we can customize our uploader. We can change the storage location, um, do some processing and so on. I'm going to leave all these at the defaults for now, but I'll customize it later. Now the next thing we need to do is add our uploader to our model, but we first need a column in our database to store it in. So let's generate a migration and we want to add a column called image to our paintings model. And I'll just give this a string type column. That's what you need to provide. And then we'll just run the migrations to uh, add that column. And then we need to add our uploader to the model. In this case, I will go to the painting model and add the uploader by calling mount uploader and then passing in the column name that I generated called in this case image and then the class for the uploader, which is image uploader. And then to get this working, I also need to add the image column to our attribute accessible call at the top here. So if you're using that, make sure to add your um, column name there. So now whenever we add or edit a painting in our application, we just need to make it possible to attach a file in our form. So here's the view template for our paintings form, and this is where we want to add our file attachment field. So let's just add a new file field here and call it image because that's what we named it. Now we also need to make this a multi-part form to handle file attachments. So we just pass in an HTML option here and say multi-part is true. All right, so let's give this a try here by reloading our form. As you can see, there's our uh, choose file option here and we can just choose a picture and say upload painting. All right, so it looks like that worked, but we still need our image to show up here where our placeholder currently is. So if I go to the gallery show template, you can see this is where I'm looping through my paintings and displaying each of them. And you can see I have this image placeholder and this is just what I need to replace with the actual image itself. So we'll just change this to an image tag. And then to get the URL to our new image, we can call painting.imageURL. And so image, because that's the name we provided when we added mounted the uploader. Now one little gotcha here is that this will return nil if um, no image is set in the database. So you may want to call 2s on this just to make sure it's converted to a string um, so that it works with image tag. And we can try this out by reloading our page here. And there's our uploaded image. It looks great, except it is awfully big. It would be nice if we could make this smaller and resize it. Now the resizing should be done inside of the image uploader class that was generated earlier. And if we look at the comments here, you can see there's a call that we can call process on and then to do any kind of processing we want, such as scaling. But we don't wanna do this on the original image. Instead, I wanna make a separate thumbnail version uh, and then be able to link to the original a full size version as well. So to make a separate version, you can just call version, pass in a name, 
and then inside of a block you can call the process to do additional processing on that thumbnail version. Now the process method is pretty cool because the way it works is you can pass any options you want in here. It doesn't really care what it is. Uh, what it does is it looks for a method with that option name and then it passes in any values as the arguments to that method. So in this case, if we had this and wanted to do the scaling processing on our own, what we, would, what we would do is define a scale method and that would take those options as arguments and this is what would get called to do the processing for the scaling. But we don't wanna do the scaling manually on our own. Instead, we can rely on something like rmagic and notice that there's a module that we can include called rmagic which will help us to do the processing of the resizing. Now if we check out the documentation on this rmagic module, we can see exactly what methods it's going to include when we include it in our uploader. So if we scroll down here, you can see it's going to add these methods to our uploader, which we can call through the process method. So the one I want is called resize to limit, to uh, resize it and keep the aspect ratio of our image for the thumbnail version. So to use this, we just need to uncomment our rmagic module here to include it and then change the process to call the resize to limit method. And I'm just going to change the width and height to 200 by 200. There we go. Now I still need to include the rmagic gem in my gem file to be able to use it in carrier wave. So just add the gem rmagic command in your gem file and then run the bundle command to get it installed. Oh, by the way, you'll need to install image magic as well if you don't have that already. If you're on a Mac, I highly recommend using homebrew for that. And then inside of the view where I'm displaying the image and calling image URL, I can pass in which version as an argument I want to display. So in this case, I just call thumb and that'll render out the thumb version of the image. So let's try this out by uploading our image again so it processes the thumbnail version. Update our painting. And then there it is. There's our processed thumbnail version of our image uh, using our magic. Pretty awesome. Another neat thing that Carrier Wave provides is the ability to add attachments through a URL. So for example, on this second painting here, let's say I wanted to, instead of choosing a file on my local computer, just provide a URL to an image and use that instead. So inside of the form here, I'll just add a new field and call it remote image URL. And that name is important. If Carrier Wave sees that attribute set, it's going to fetch the image from the URL. Uh, and I can just provide a little label here and just say or image URL so it's a little more clear. And anything we add to our form, don't forget to also add it to your attribute accessible call in your model if you're using that. So in this case, I'll just add remote image URL for here. And then when I go to the form, I have this image URL field, which I can then just supply a URL, click update painting, and then it will use that URL to download the image and then it will also do the processing of resizing it as well. So it's pretty neat to have that option so you don't require the user to upload an actual file from their local computer. Well, that's all for this episode, but I encourage you to check out Carrier Wave and explore it on your own and uh, check out the documentation because there's a lot I didn't cover here. Uh, for example, you can make uh, it persistent across formary displays, which means that if there's a validation error in your model, you can add a cache attribute so that it persists across that and um, the uploaded file continues over the validation errors. Um, you can also add a checkbox for removing attached files and you can add S3 storage support and a lot more. Uh, I, I'm really impressed with this gem. It seems like it's very polished and just it just has worked wonderfully for me. So give it a try.